In the beginning I was like, oh, it hurt me if people say things that are definitely not true. And over the years you start knowing your collectors. Of course every week new, new are coming. And I also try to diverse, give new people a chance because everybody say, case okay, studio is not for the people, it's all back doors, sales and whatever. It's not like that, you know. K-Studio has produced some of the most memorable editions in the art world. I caught up with its founder, Mathieu Van Dan, to find out more about his journey into art and the challenges involved in running this very unique business. So I'm Mathieu from K-Studio. Yeah, you're here in my studio in Ghent, in our office. So basically, um, it all started from a passion. I'm actually a cook from profession. My background came off from street art, like interest in graffiti, I did the first show with Para. We did the first project, the sticker pack. We screen printed like uh, 36 stickers. And then uh, we met Rimet, a friend from France. I think this was the first uh, sculptural work we did. The Rainbow, very hands-on approach, doing stuff and learning by doing, you know. Then after Para, I think we did something with Boris Telegan, Delta. And he introduced me to Todd James, and from Todd James to Stephen Powers, and also it worked like that, you know, like people say, yeah, this guy's genuine, you can rely on him, he's, he's good, so it became easier to approach artists and to set up projects. How do you find, like, new artists? Yeah, Instagram is a great tool for me to, to discover and see new things, talking with friends, going to exhibitions, listening to other collectors, it's like, yeah, all these things together and think trusting my own eye, you know, it's like I said, it's, it comes from a passion, it comes from the heart, so I really have to have a connection with the work, with the artist to, to start a, to start a dialogue and start a startup like an additional production. We worked with a lot of artists who works mainly 2D, two-dimensional, so they don't really know how the work looks three-dimensional. Every artist would like to have something out of his painting and that's the strength of us to to materialize this or make it in three dimensions. But now also if certain artists, I really like them to sculpt it themselves because certain artists have a really special like uh, visual language that's hard to translate from to somebody else, you know? So or it becomes too slick or too, too polished. I'm very passionate by design as well and I think to bring these two together is very interesting especially like working with this uh, contemporary artist they don't they're not like architects or whatever so they don't have like a history of making furniture so it's nice to ask them if they open for that like how you see a lamp or cupboard or chair also sometimes I was tired of just static sculptures you know that's also why we collab we're not just the executors of a factory we also bring things to the table we we approach an artist if he's interesting to work or he likes what we do. We start a conversation or dialogue and from there we just, yeah, I just give them ideas. They just, they tell me what they would like to make and yeah, not everything is possible or feasible. So uh, like this we come to an agreement and then it's, it's, on, it's to us to yeah, start developing things and go back and forth to the artist till we have like a nice final product. The artworks are a result of a unique collaboration between K-Studio and the artist. It's never about a simple reproduction of an existing piece, but always a new creation. I'm most enjoying it, creating new stuff. That's why I make my, I like to make it myself complicated. For, for example, I like certain vases I could keep on making and just put a new pattern, but yeah, there's no joy in that for me. And yeah. what's, uh, you would say, the most complicated or complex project you've done so far? So if you show the trick, you lose the magic. Sometimes the most, the most simple looking sculptures are sometimes the most complicated to, to execute, you know. So I say the, the quality is very important for us, so... And I think I have a good eye for that, for, for bringing the right people together and, and make sure we have a good end product because people only see like the final product, but sometimes it takes like a year to, to get there, you know, from, from A to Z and to, to get all the trials. And, you know, sometimes you have a good sample and you say, okay, that's the example for the production, but finally it doesn't turn out, you know? So we have to, sometimes we have to reject or damage. Once I think from the early paraphases, once I damaged one, I, I, I demolished 150 vases. I was on a, like, I don't know, a container park, like, where you dump stuff and I was there with like a car full of vases and I just 
damage them with the hammer. People are like, oh, I want one. It's like, no, you can't. You know, it's just, they don't, they cannot exist. You know, I don't want them to come on the market somewhere somehow. Mm -hmm. So if we make a vase of 200 pieces or a bronze sculpture of eight. The, I think for us, the quality remains the same. I also try to balance between more commercial or more like accessible, bigger works and more like very limited stuff. And I try to find a way to let them live together. K-Studio always try to innovate while putting quality first. One of the most iconic collaborations was with the artist Joyce Pensato, which sadly passed away in June 2019. Joyce Pensato is best known for her large-scale paintings representing familiar cartoon characters in a darker light. She had a show in Anzuka in, um, in Tokyo. And I asked Nanzuka, I really would love to work with Joyce, could we make it happen? So actually they made it happen to make a sculpture, to present in the show, it was, uh, it was this one. Uh, she was so, so delighted with, with seeing this final product. And she told the people around her, like her mother gallery, Petzl Gallery, and Elizabeth is her assistant for nine years. Look, we should make more sculptures. So she selected, I think, eight, nine images. I think she would like to translate into a sculpture for the future. And there we agreed to make like uh, three to four sculptures more, like, and this is what we are doing now. This, we just uh, finished the Lisa, I, I mean, a couple of months ago. We're working now on a Donald, and there will be a fourth one that's the, the Batman, the mask. And she set up like a foundation to fund like young artists to help them starting in the art world because it's, yeah, it's a struggle. So actually the proceeds from this kind of sculptures, her proceeds will, will all go to this foundation. Legends never die, they say. K-Studio pieces are always produced in limited editions. With high demand, it gets more complicated to choose who to sell to. With limited editions, we have only like 10 or 50 or 100, and if there's more demand than availability, it becomes, yeah, becomes frustrating for, for a lot of people, you know, so I have to deal with that. And I always like the direct approach and also the personal approach with the collectors. Of course, with bigger editions, it become harder, but also it's unpleasant because, yeah, you have so many people supporting you from the beginning, but you cannot keep selling to the same people. And over the years, you start knowing your collectors. Okay, of course, every week new, you are coming. And I also try to diverse, give new people a chance because everybody say, case studio is not for the people, it's all back doors, sales and whatever. It's not like that, you know? So, for sure, you have returning collectors that you like, try to serve and that they, to help building the collection. But we always keep track of people in which artists they are interested and they always will have a chance you have to understand that we get like a lot of comments. I get harder in this as well. In the beginning I was like, oh, it hurt me if people say things that they're definitely not true, but I don't, I'm not a moderator to start defending myself. And it's like, okay, it's like what it is, you know. As these artworks get more sought after by collectors and hit high prices on the secondary market, the flip side of the coin is that it attracts buyers only looking for a quick profit. I think the integrity for the artist and or the gallery or the person I'm working with is very important. We try to protect that as much as possible, especially with the really small editions. We try to place them right because but you have no you can never guarantee, you know. So lately we also like working like, like galleries do, we try to have a non-resale agreement for two, three years, you know, at least. So I think it's not healthy for the yeah, for the artist, for the whole the whole thing to in less than a year to put it in auction, you know. Mm -hmm. Auction houses don't, don't, don't care so much for them, money is money. But yeah, it's a, it's a struggle, <laughs> like for, I think for every gallery, so it's also like a little task of us, or a big task of us to protect that. Given the success of Kiss Studio, what's next? thought about this a, a lot. I think it's for me interesting to keep it small, just to keep overviewing things, to keep doing it and keep it personal, you know, so I think then I can guarantee the quality. Are you thinking of doing a like, show of your pieces? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm not in a hurry, you know, but mm -hmm. I think we did, I, I never counted exactly, but I think we did over 120 editions now, so yeah, I think it would be interesting to, to make a show with everything there and maybe, yeah, some original work and make a book of all the editions. Mm -hmm. But I think I want to do this 
the major city like yeah, New York or London or like uh, but then again also when I start thinking about the work just to transport everything and in the beginning also I, I made only like I kept one of, of every every uh, edition I made but yeah if one breaks I don't know if I can remake it you know so it's yeah. people say yeah you can you can make take insurance but I don't care about the money it's just more the object I don't want to lose so Let's see what comes in the next years. But like I say, I'm not in a hurry to do that, but it would be nice to have like an overview mm -hmm. yeah, exhibition about all the works. It would be the cherry on the cake, maybe, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's so much more to say, but I think you have like a small idea. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.